Hello and welcome to the Orchid Saga. So yeah, today I wanted to do uh, at least one repot on uh, a brushia type because I want to uh, have more of them also in these net pots. And I have actually a mystic maze over here. This setup, it's a bit lower than these pots. And that's very convenient because these spikes <laughs> are always touching the roof. Uh, plus, uh, I'm more experimenting with the uh, net pots in self-watering, so we have more air in uh, around the roots. Um, more about that uh, later on, but that's uh, what I'm uh, about to do with uh, with these brushier types. You can see they really start touching the upper shells or uh, the roof, etc. So I was planning to do this uh, very large one. Uh, this is the Orange Delight, it's beautiful. And yes, it's in bloom, but it's also working on new roots. So I thought that's a beautiful uh, uh, moment uh, in time to do a repot on this one. As you can see, it's a fairly high pot, so it's need to come down a little bit. But I don't have as big pot to this uh, width that I need. I don't have at the moment, so I need to figure something out. I could easily make four plants out of, out of it, but I don't want to do that because I really want to keep uh, it as a big plant as long as I can. So I need to figure something out. Probably something uh, like this one. This is my Miltonia, as you can see. I, I, and I love the look of it when they are getting so big and, and beautiful. <laughs> so that's what I want to try to do with my brushes as well. So yeah, sadly, I cannot film this, uh, this one, but we can do one of these guys, this one. These are still fine, so I'm going to take uh, one of these guys. As you can see, they start a new growth and really uh, heading to the edge of the pot so they can uh, be uh, repotted. And uh, yeah, it's a good time. Um, no, it's not the best time because we are heading into winter, but it's, it's it still keep, uh, keeps on growing. So I don't think uh, we will get in any trouble. And also, it's also uh, already used to this setup. So we already have a reservoir, so it's uh, it's used to uh, to that. So that's what, what I wanted to do today. So I hope you uh, will like that, uh, this type of video. So let's start uh, repotting a brushia. So we are in the orchid room. And I thought, well, let's try it from this angle. You're more a little bit to the right of me. <laughs> So I hope you will have a good view on uh, what's happening here on the table. So firstly, I'm going to take off the spike. It's very, very long, as you can see. And so it's going to be in a way it's done blooming. So yeah, there might be a little bit of energy left, but the plant is very healthy. So I think it can do without. So let's get the sterilized scissors and just cut it off nicely with a clean cut, as you can see. And there it goes. So the spike is gone and as you can see it's almost like a little uh, world of plants in here because we have different plants because we have some uh, ferns as well and we have the moss and I love the moss I love ferns as well but I don't like them yeah I like the look of it uh, with with in the pot with the orchids but they take up uh, the water as well so I keep uh, taking them out when I can because otherwise I, I cannot keep up with the watering because both of the plants and we have several ferns will take up quite some water so it's a little bit too much but uh, I also do very enjoy the look of the moss inside of the pot I did Last year I did uh, get quite some moss growing on the orchids, on the pots, top layers. That's beautiful, but it's also kind of a shield. So I have less air movement, so that's not very beneficial. But therefore, like I said in the intro, we're going to discuss it a little bit further. I like to use these net pots because they are very open, as you can see. And these outer pots are not that deep, so these net pots do fit in fairly well, I, I think. We still have, if I move my thumb, some uh, room for some air movement, like I said. Plus, if it does cover up with moss, uh, it will not grow. The moss normally doesn't grow on the uh, edge of the pot or on, the, on this side of the pot, I should say, in my case. So I will have the air, I will have the moss and the orchids and hopefully a lot of healthy roots. <laughs> I will uh, do a video 
uh, next year, I think uh, late spring, early summer, about the net pots because I'm using them for more than only the reasons I just dis discussed uh, on my warmer growers. I hope they can take the colder temperature a bit better when they are not um, basically when they have more air around them, I should say, because the air isn't as cold as water. So that's my theory. I don't know if it works, so therefore I will do updates uh, late spring. So when we uh, head into the warmer weather, we can have a look at the pots and make a video about it, I think. Who knows? Uh, it might be uh, inspiring for more of you guys who have the same type of troubles, with the, especially with the warmer growers during the winter. They like to, uh, not, not like to, but they used to uh, lose the roots in some cases. So that was something that I would work, uh, would like to work with. Well, as you can see, if you know me, if you know my channel a little bit longer, this is completely lekka as far as you can see. So that means that this, this is in this pot for quite a while. Um, and yeah, let me tell you that we are talking about the Odontobrachia billabong. And I have the billabong alba as well. But this is the, uh, here you can see, I hope without the glare, 2019, so at least for three years in this setup. That's why uh, the LECA is still in there. We're gonna replace the LECA, most of it with uh, for pumice, because I like the pumice. <laughs> but first we need to take it out of the pot, so let's, uh, let's try and do that. I see good roots, I see some old roots. That was to be expected after our three years. These bulb, are not uh, rotting, maybe you saw it, but they have this dark color. This is just what they naturally get. But the more younger bulbs you can see are beautiful green, and this is the last one. And look at the size of it. The previous one behind it, and then we go fairly bigger. So that's a good sign, of course. So I'm squeezing the pot to try to loosen it up a little bit. And let's see if that is loose enough. Yeah. Here we go. I hope you can see it. Yeah. Sorry for the noise. There's more to come. And I see beautiful new root tips. There we go. Oh, I, I'm really uh, not into that noise, but I know it sounds very really, uh, rough on camera. I apologize. On f in film, I should say. Look at that, those root tips, yes. That makes me happy. <laughs> but we have some other roots as well. So I will try to take them off. While we add it, of course, we, we can do some cleaning up. So first get the, the steak out, we don't need it anymore. Maybe it didn't have much roots when I put it in the pot. That's why I staked it. I don't know. It's too long ago. And I don't remember if I did film it or not. I don't think so. I even have some Cintiq in it. That wasn't necessary. I, I, but I, I was figuring my, uh, my growing method out basically. I still do that obviously. But I try to make it better and better. But then I thought I needed the Cintiq with the brush head types, but I, I don't need it because they do well without it. So we can take it out, but I don't will, uh, if, if some Cintiq stays in the pot, it's fine as well. So now I'm going to start to clean it up a little bit. Just the roots that I can reach easily without damaging the rest. And that's once again the beauty of inorganic media. I don't need to take everything out because it's it's inorganic, so it will not rot. And it's such a big plush, if you ask me. Repotting is, I don't like it, I never will like it, but uh, it's so much easier now for me. So yeah, this is definitely a old root. I see uh, development is going over here even as well, so yeah. And I did get a little bit of mold here. But that's not the end of the world. As we saw, it did keep on growing new roots. Just uh, if it's nicely balanced. So you don't want to have too much root rot, of course. 
not too much fertilizer, not too much salt in there. That's something I will uh, probably discuss as well later on next year because I did uh, reduce my fertilizer even more. I didn't feed my orchids much, but I still uh, even reduced it a little bit just to keep it uh, nice and fairly fresh in the pots. Not too much uh, salt built up because I don't flush. And as you can see, this is without flushing for over three years now. Doesn't seem like a very unhealthy orchid to me. <laughs> so it works for me. I'm not saying you need, you shouldn't flush. It just depends on what you uh, what you like. But I like to uh, try things. And I came uh, over the years. I came up with a sort of new setup that suits me better. It's not completely new, of course. But I did get pieces of information from other growers, and I. They put it all together and s sort of kind of made my own. I hope that makes sense. And that's the beauty of YouTube, I think, because there's so much information out there and you can apply that information in to your plants, to your climate and, and what you like. And I think that's very, very important. Your climate. Don't for ever forget that because this might work for me, but you may, it may not work for you because you have a completely different climate. And it's really one of the first things that I needed to learn when I start growing orchids, that a climate is so important. And even without, first I did start growing them in, inside of the home. Then I get, did get my greenhouse, so you can believe that, obviously understand that uh, the climate is completely different. Better for me and for the plants, but completely different. So I needed to adjust more and more, or even more than I already had. But yeah, that's something I like, luckily. And I like to, uh, to watch my plants. And I saw that the, especially the warmer growers, Brachia, Cattleyas, Ancelia Africanas, that type of orchids, do suffer a bit in winter, in my winter. Even though I have it around 80 degrees at night, the water gets colder than that and they really hate it. And they're telling me that by letting their roots rot, losing the root systems, too much, too much roots. So uh, do get uh, get lost over winter. So therefore I thought that's a nice experiment. That's something I need to work with. So once again, we will have more about that later on in the year because I want to be as certain as I can uh, about this inf types of information. If I if I'm going to share it online, of course. I need to know more about it. Because I don't want to share things that that didn't work or, or weren't properly um, m monitor, monitored uh, by me as a grower. That's a water meter that we can reuse probably for the next setup. Well, actually, this was was doing so well, so I need to have a look at that, but I will do that off camera. It might be a bit dirty, so. And then they get stuck, and it's very annoying. Because you think the plant has a, enough water, and it turns out it's completely dry. But the meter is stuck, so yeah. <laughs> it happens. It's something I needed to learn as well. Let me zoom in a little bit if you, for those who want to see a little bit more close up of the root system. And I adjust the camera uh, slightly, there we are. So what I'm do, I just pull on the Cintiq. If it really doesn't give any thing, I just cut it off where I can. Well, actually, and there did it, did it go. So I didn't pull uh, hard enough, but that's, also, I think I'm not trying to pull too hard, of course. Just gently removing the Cintiq. And while I'm doing that, I also cut off the older roots. Or the roots who are not that healthy. This new root here, I hope you can see it, is going through the Cintiq. So obviously, I'm going to leave that alone. And that's what I meant with gently pulling. So I know which root is moving when I pull a little bit of Cintiq. 
And then I can check if I need to get it off, if I can't take it off, or just need to leave it there. Uh, I'm filming this because sometimes I get a question about the repottings that people like to see them. So that's why I do that. This is a little bit, uh, might be a little bit longer and I hope you don't mind. I just wanted to show as much as I can as a grower. So you have an idea what I uh, do and how I take care of my plants. This is falling over. Do we have two plants in the pot? No, it doesn't look like it. They all come, this is a growing direction, plus this is a growing direction, and they come all together towards this bulb. So I'm going to leave it because I, once again, I like to grow my uh, plants as big as I can. <laughs> I like the look of those more specimen plants. Whoops, and there is a new growth coming underneath that sheet. And while we add it, I take off the sheets as well to give that new growth more room to grow. And also those sheets have a tendency to, to stay a little bit too moist sometimes. So while they can, I take them off. But to avoid those sheets to uh, start rotting, I found that the top layer of pebbles is helping as well because the pebbles are about this level. So everything above the pebbles does get a bit drier than uh, everything underneath the pebbles. So it's not only preventing the uh, from getting a dry top layer, but also helps to uh, let the sheets dry up because that's what what we want. Obviously, we don't want to uh, keep those plants too wet, so we need to find a balance, and that's how I uh, how I do it. And there you see, we have quite some f young ferns, and I have ferns these days everywhere. <laughs> so I don't mind. I just take them off like wheat. I love ferns, but if I let them grow, those spores will get everywhere. And it's basically already happened. But you can imagine how they will multiply even more if I am allowing them to. So that's why I try to uh, keep a little bit, keep it a little bit under control. And that's, I love the moss as well. So that's why I try this setup because I don't want to take off too much moss. But like I said, if you have it covered completely in moss, it sort of creates a shield. It's, a, it's very even very hard to water them because the water will run over, over the moss and fall uh, over the pot as well. And you have plants underneath, so it's very un uh, it will fall on those plants. So it's very inconvenient. So therefore I try uh, to keep figuring out how I can keep the moss and keep a nice setup for the plants as well. Well, meanwhile, while I, while I was chatting away about different things <laughs> that became a crush, I think this is a uh, fairly uh, nice uh, root system. And yes, we have some more, I'm sorry, I was a little bit out of frame. We have some more brownies roots, but I just checked them. And these are perfectly uh, firm and fine. So, and as you can see, those brown roots are even shooting out. So therefore, these are completely working. I'm just going to leave them on there. So I'm going to clean up uh, this and then we will uh, put it in, uh, in its new home. So before anyone asks, I didn't use any hydroperoxide on the plant because I, I don't need to. Uh, it's very healthy and I'm going to repot it. Um, and not in, uh, in, uh, from bark to uh, inorganic or something. But what I do is some alcohol and I do spray the scissors for you never know, because this one we used on the root system, let it, the alcohol evaporate and thereby cleaning basically the scissors. So I thought I need to point it out because otherwise I will get some questions about it, I think. <laughs> and that's okay, obviously, but... Uh, so yeah, I'm going to uh, continue to uh, get the setup ready and we will uh, finish this repot. Everything is ready. We have the pot, we have the orchids and we have the new media. Beautiful pumice. I will use, I did also clean my uh, gloves with just with some uh, alcohol on it. So that's why I touched the uh, new uh, pumice and it will not hurt it. Oh yeah, and I did forget to uh, check uh, the water meter. 
So let's do that quickly because you can open them up on the top and also on the bottom. So yeah, there are some roots in there. I hope you can see it from the ferns. So th these did a mm, little bit mesh <laughs> with my water meter, but it should now be fine. I think uh, one of those roots did get hold of it and kept it more downwards. Yeah, there is a, it can move again, so it should be fine. So I'm going to put it in there already, the water meter on the bottom and I will place a little bit of pumice first. Just a little layer. And you see some pebbles that I didn't take out and some lacquer in there because that's something that I did a reuse, obviously, uh, uh, obviously. <laughs> uh, from another uh, repot, I did boil it. But yeah, I not always take all the pebbles out because I don't not really need it. Because, but if you get too much pebbles in there, you will not have the wicking motion anymore. So keep that in mind if you do it like I do. So we have just a little layer of the pumice, as you can see. And now we need to uh, find a nice spot to put the orchid in. Let's, whoops, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is some older roots from the ferns again. Let me uh, put it in the middle as much as I can with those new growths. And I try to hold the water meter with my left hand in the back there as well. I need a third hand at least. Well, there we go. I hope you uh, can see it. So I try to hold everything in place. We have the new growth beautifully in the middle of the pot. And now I'm going to uh, fill it up with new fresh pumice. use a little bit over here I can see so I kept the, the orchid fairly uh, low so I can now lift it up and while I do that I will shake the pot a little bit so I try to get the pumice everywhere around the roots and you can barely see it I think but I just lift it a little bit and then I saw the pumice fall underneath the plant more and that was actually what I was planning to do. So that worked. We have a little bit of a gap there. Take a few pebbles, uh, pumice, and I will put more pebbles in there because this is the oldest bulb. So we don't need much moisture there. We want the moisture more in front. So basically what I'm saying, I have it a little bit in an angle. So less pumice here, more pumice there because there are, will be the new roots. Let me see, did I have some pebbles? No, I need to uh, get some new pebbles. I will be uh, right back. So yeah, I thought I had some laying around. I did, but not in uh, where they should be. But I did find the pebbles. And these are a little bit wet, so that's why they are a little bit darker. That's okay. So like I said, in the back a little bit more around the old bulbs once again, because they Probably will not make new roots anyhow. And then I'm going to move around and make uh, this layer. Top layer with pebbles. I really like the look of it. And who knows, the moss my, uh, might keep on growing. It probably will. Like I said, I have moss and, and also ferns, but moss everywhere as well. And I really, really love the look of it. But I need to find a way to work with, with uh, both of them. Um, yes, I think this is it for it. Uh, let me uh, grab the camera and we will have a close-up. I think this works a little bit better to give you a nice close-up. But like, like I talked about, the look of it, the pebbles, I really enjoy it. Early, I should say, that wasn't a very good sentence. <laughs> synthesis but you uh, understand what I mean this is a beautiful new growth 
coming out there. Beautiful in the middle now of the pot. And I did saw another, yeah, there it is. It's underneath there. It's almost buried in there. But there is a new growth started as well. Yeah, there it is. So that has room to grow and that has room to grow. This is a little less more in the middle than this one. But yeah, what, what can we do, right? So yeah, this is just an old leaf going over from an older bulb. But here you can obviously see very clearly the color difference between uh, the newest bulbs and, uh, and the older ones. So yeah, I don't know why, but this seems to do that. I see this more uh, happening on my, uh, my brushes. Maybe because I did give them quite some light. I don't know. But uh, yeah, a net pot with a brushier type, which can now grow on. We can have a nice top layer of moss. We still have the air around the roots. So yeah, let's do an update, like I said, in, in uh, late spring, uh, early summer, and see how these net pots works. So this is the video for today. Uh, once again, I hope you like this. I hope I uh, did share as much as I could about uh, the setup that I uh, that I like and 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 uh, things that I'm trying out. But obviously, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below or suggestions for videos. Always open to that as well. For now, thank you so much for watching, of course. And if you like, give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you didn't already have, you might consider subscribing to my channel. And I really hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye bye.